Hello and welcome to White Horse Music TV. Oh, that's a love heart. Do you? Oh, no, it's all. Hang on, hang on. Ah, oh, that's nice. My name is Richard Bedinner, and um, today I am going to be showing you a couple of sort of like student cellos. And this is officially a video for Ben because Ben was asking for me to um, demonstrate some. I'm still laughing at the love heart. Um, some student cellos. Um, because he's interested in buying them, we're planning on sh sending them, well, sending one to him anyway, and a violin as well, because he wants to play both, not at once probably. Um, so um, these are two enormously popular um, student cellos. And, um, there's maybe about 12 different student cellos in this sort of price range that I have access to, and these are two of my favourites. Uh, this one here on this side, your right, my left, is um, Enrico Student Plus Two. Um, and they have a really nice sort of like matte finish to them, not shiny. And uh, they are sort of like, they're, they're a bit of a step up from a lot of the student cellos that you get. They use all the proper parts for it to be a real cello, I would say. And this is about where our cellos start. So with um, cellos below this point, often they don't have real ebony fingerboards or real ebony pegs. And often, you know, you'll see the, the white wood coming through underneath the the paint which has been painted on to make it look like ebony, to make it look like that black wood. And you see that white wood coming through when you, you know, after you've been playing for a couple of years, which is not great. So, and um, you know, it's got other things like it's got real purfling. So these two black lines around the edge of the cello, they are called purfling. So they are um, two black lines of ebony with a piece of very fine thin piece of wood between those two lines and it protects the inside of the cello so if you uh, make a chip on the outside rim of your cello that thin piece of wood will protect the inside of the cello and um, stop it from potentially cracking the inside of the cello and damaging the the cello and the sound so that, you know, purfling is really important on a lot of cheap cellos. It's just two lines drawn on, which is pretty funny. So these two cellos, they're proper. And I consider these to be actual cellos as opposed to cello shaped objects, which other cellos without those, um, without those parts, the purfling and the ebony fingerboards and that sort of thing, I, I consider them to be those cello shaped objects are not so good. Okay, now the difference between these two. So as I said, this one is a matte finished cello. They tend to have a quite a broad full sound for a cello in this price range. So that, I decided that I wanted to stock these a few years ago. Then more recently, I decided to stock these. This is a Schumann Prodigy cello. Looks quite different. It's shinier but it's still got that multi-coloured sort of look. You know, a lot of the very basic cheap cellos have very thick, shiny varnish, which that varnish holds the wood in place, doesn't let it vibrate the way it wants to, and therefore won't allow it to have a deep, resonant sound. Where this has a finer varnish with um, multiple layers, and those multiple layers have different colours to give it a beautiful look. Um, but also because it's not very thick, it allows the wood to vibrate the way it wants to and ends up having a beautiful sound. But it sounds to me more the way it looks. And in fact, they both sound the way they look. This one sounds a bit brighter, shinier, more ringing. Both have a lot of depth and both are really amazing in their price range. So I'll start out by playing the Enrico Student Plus 2. Let's have a go. There you go. 
it's just, it's warm sounding and it's full throughout the spectrum of the sound. Often with cheap cellos, when you get up to that A string, mm. instead of getting that sort of warm, full sounding A string, you get this piercing sort of sound and nobody likes that. I'm pretty sure nobody likes that. Okay, so that's a really beautiful sound. Now, I'll grab the Schumann Prodigy. Okay, first thing I notice is that it, it's sort of a slightly brighter sound, slightly more open and ringing sort of sound, but I'll play a bit more. again that A string is not blaring at me it's partially a little bit because of the choice of strings like we're obsessive with our setups of these cellos. I mean we've spent about four hours making all of our parts for each of these cellos and that's sort of like our specialty but one of the like the final part of that setting up process is to choose the strings and on both of these cellos we've decided to choose a, ya a Larsen Larsen string on the A string, which gives it a little tiny bit more fullness to the sound. You can see the difference in the winding down here. Those three are helicore strings, which by themselves are very nice strings anyway, but the helicore strings tend to have a very slightly brighter A string than the rest of the set. And sometimes on these sort of, you know, this uh, beginner intermediate sort of cellos, I like to use another string on the A string just to sort of warm it up a bit. Now I'm going to play the piece that I always play on these just to compare them. I'll play the Bach. Prelude number one. contest and this is why I stock both of those cellos usually now if you can just tell Ben which cello that he should buy then it'll help Ben I reckon do that thanks for watching and have a good night <laughs>